Nearby Lucas, what's your favourite Steven Seagal moment? And, and why is it that time he shit himself after getting choked out by an MMA star? I mean, I don't know about that moment, but now is my new favourite one. <laughs> <laughs> so Steven Seagal is a walking oxymoron in that he's supposedly a famous, highly successful action star, despite being a uncharismatic piece of talentless shit. I'll sit for a minute. So I just to clarify as well, if anyone doesn't know, like Steven Seagal, huge piece of shit. Terrible, I've terrible. Heard, I've heard he's bad to work with, but are there any like specific examples or any other things? Misogynistic, like homophobic, like, you name it, he's done it. There's like a great be uh, Behind the Bastards have done a great episode on just Steven Seagal specifically. And he's just like breaking out why he's awful. Like he also as well hangs out with dictators in Eastern Europe and um, has supposedly um, been involved in some way, shape or form with human trafficking, so. Fucking yeah, hell. and an inconsistency that is possibly the result of, if rumours are to be believed, a bet made in the 1980s by his agent. So you might be wondering, Lucas, like who is this, this agent hmm. who, who yeah. birthed Steven Seagal, who forced him upon the world? Uh, well, that's a guy called Michael Ovitz. He is an enigmatic, unimaginably powerful figure in Hollywood, uh, regarded as a kingmaker when it comes to acting. And some of the people that he's represented during his long and illustrious career as an agent include stars like Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg, alongside a smattering of other people we're not going to mention because they didn't make Jaws. He's not some random agent out of no. nowhere, no. Well, he's, he's, he's so not a random agent that trade publications refer to him as, I shit you not, a super agent. <laughs> like, he's that good. Like He's the guy, if you, he's your agent, he can get you any role you want. And as you might imagine, him being so powerful and be referred to like, you know, in such a way by like, you know, the industry publications <laughs> reporting on his antics. He's like, got a pretty high opinion of himself about his ability to turn anybody into a star. And, and this is where we have to you know, go delve into the realm of rumor here. But the more we talk about it, the more you're probably gonna be like, that does sound pretty plausible. Right. And uh, the rumor here is that he was getting a haircut. A haircut, and, his, and he was talking about the fact I could make anybody famous, anybody imaginable. Doesn't matter how uncharismatic, how shit an actor that anyone could be a star. I'm their agent. And the story goes that they snowballed um, into other agents querying over it's about his ability to do this. And uh, the, the story goes that the other agent challenged Ovitz to make the most uncharismatic man he could find into a star, to which Ovitz replied, I've got just the guy. And that guy was Steven Seagal, who was his personal trainer at the time. He was just the most aggressively uninteresting, uncharismatic man anyone had ever met, but he was, you know, he was pretty decent at training him. He's basically just like trope in uh, romantic comedies from the 90s of, I bet you can't make the nerdy girl into like, you know, the prom queen. Well, you can, because you just take off you her glasses off. and let her hair down. Yeah, and, and, you know, and it makes sense in this one, because you know, Stephen Seagal had a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe if Stephen Seagal let his ponytail down, it'd be a different story. But <laughs> I, I love that trope as well. It's always like some super hot actress they get, isn't it? Yeah. Like, the, oh, you know, there's ones where it's like, you know, stars like Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Oh, she's so <laughs> ugly. It's like... That's why I can tell one of the best spoof movies ever made is not another teen movie where they lampshade that exact trope. And it's like, you can't do her. She's got overalls and a ponytail and glasses. <laughs> no, 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 anyone but her, not Janie Briggs. No. Oh, guys, she's got glasses and a ponytail. Oh, look at that, she's got paint on her overalls. What is that, guys? There's no way she could be pro queen. And you have them like walking around the school, like, well, what about those? And it's like an, uh, an albino lady and like, um, conjoined twins who were joined at the head. And like the guy jokes about saying, well, you know, um, uh, they might not be too much to talk about on their own, but together they make one very passable chick. What about the Fratelli sister? So they're slightly disfigured and connected at the head. I did. But combined, those two make up one pretty decent chick. And that's like the joke there, isn't it? It's like, then she comes out, pony, she's clumsy, she's got a ponytail. How will we ever make her <laughs> into the prom queen? But imagine that, but it's real life, and the person actually is a piece of shit no one likes. And some of his earlier stuff is passable as an action movie, you know, from that era. Like, you know, his later stuff is just, like, hilariously bad. 
To the point where there is like an infamous scene in which he has to walk across a room and he's out of breath. But they have to use cuts to hide the fact that he's out of breath walking across a room. I've seen a couple of um, fight scenes that he's been in, you know, a bit older. And yeah, the, the cuts are horrendous. Because he's just not a very talented martial artist. And the thing I want to mention as well is that he can't run. Which to me is like, well, it's like, you know, it's not the most important thing here, but the fact that he can't even run right. I would argue that it might be the most important thing for an action star to nail, because just look at Tom Cruise. <laughs> okay. He's literally famous for being the action star that runs with his heart. That's the thing, he runs so fucking hard, doesn't he? He's like a gazelle. It's like Tom Cruise is like, dun, 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 like perfect, fought like a robot. I do like those AI programs where it's like we've taught an AI how to walk, and you see the first couple and like stumbling <laughs> everywhere, like drunken toddlers, and then like they get to the end of it and they're like just moving like the T1000. Yeah. And in contrast, Steven Seagal, the thing that cracks me up about when he runs is that he runs and he flares like his arm out for some reason. And there's loads of fan theories like he does it to like push the air past him. Oh, you just don't understand the efficiency involved. I don't know. So, do you know when like you see older women jog and they do like the T-Rex arms? It, and it's like, oh, like, it's like half that, but then half like an action run. Like, oh, like he's carrying like he's shopping under one arm or something. And it probably begs the question, like, okay, he's a shit actor, but there are plenty of people who are shit actors who've, like, you know, been in movies. Yeah. Like, what is there to lend credence to the theory this was done for a bet? Well, for that, we can actually turn to quotes from Mr. Seagal himself. Um, because according to him, uh, you know, early in his career when he's interviewed, like, oh, so what brought you into acting? He's like, oh, I don't know. He, he had, apparently had no interest in acting up until he met Ovitz. Someone and, just turned around to him and was like, yeah. I could be your agent, yeah. you'd be great. And o according to Steven Seagal, Ovitz said to him, um, oh, I think you could be an action star. And he came in um, with a bunch of scripts and said, pick one. Oh. And, that, and we'll get it made and you'll be the star. According to people who watched Steven Seagal's first ever screen test, like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, they legitimately thought he was a joke when they brought him in. I'm not surprised considering how he reads lines. Jimmy if I find out your line, we'll come back and kill you in your own kitchen. He just, he's, he's horrendous. He's actor, and as no. you say, he's a void of charisma. Yeah, that's the thing. He's like, he's actively uninteresting. Mm -hmm. Like, anybody else in the roles that he's in would be more interesting than him. And there's a few actors in Hollywood who have that particular skill, which is that they're so aggressively uncharismatic that it goes all the way around and then makes them somehow, like, more interesting to watch. Right, just out yeah. of the sheer morbid curiosity of how did they get cast. Mm -hmm. Like, Jai Courtney. Like, Jai Courtney cannot act. He's terrible in almost everything he's in, but he keeps getting cast in movies. He was in the James Gunn movie. Yeah, he's in James Gunn. He's also in, um, uh, like, you know, the Terminator Genesis movie oh, as Michael okay, Bean's right. character, and he's just like, he has absolutely no chemistry whatsoever um, with Amelia Clark, and they're the stars of the thing. Yeah. And you're just watching it, and this thing, and you're like, like, how did you get cast? It's like James Corden. Can you think of anybody anywhere who likes James Corden? Like, even amongst celebrities there are celebrities don't like him but he keeps For getting sure, cast 15 20 years ago when he was like on the gavin nobody stacey. on gavin and stacy but his ego has clearly got far too big yeah. for you know being a likable person and every story about him even from other actors that you think of, like, you know bite their tongue mm -hmm. just say they don't like him he's a piece of shit yet he keeps getting cast in these like you know huge roles just to go uh, bring back to that big pile of scripts and i'm wondering like which one did seagal pick if you don't have his filmography committed to memory he picks above the law Above the law. It's his, it's his first big movie, yeah. And just the fact he was offered that chance. But I know something out there like, what movie did you pick? It's Above the Law. You know what? Here's a clip of Steven Seagal in Above the Law. I've never seen Above the Law, but it sounds like a bad movie. Well, that's one of the, those weird trends about almost every movie Seagal's in where they all seem to describe him. Like, Joe, because he's so egomaniacal right, and, up, yeah. and like up his own ass. Like, all of his movie titles just sound like they're describing like the most badass man in existence. Or what he thinks is the yeah, most badass man. That's what he man. thinks he is, yes. <laughs> One of the things I like about this story is that even when Seagal's trying to recall it in the most favourable light possible, it still lends credence to the rumour that he was, like, you know, made famous for a bet. Because he talks about how, like, yeah, yeah, you know, there were unrealised Eastwood scripts that they brought me in from the studio I wanted to find someone for. And he says, like, yeah, the studio were looking for the next Schwarzenegger or Stallone. And then you look at him in Above the Law, and I'm going to show you a picture of him. 
<laughs> that's oh the, my next, God. the next Schwarzenegger or Stallone, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the weird thing, isn't it? Because I don't know whether, again, it was this um, agent of his, this super agent. Mm -hmm. But like, legitimately in my head when I was younger, I had him in the same range as like a slow-o. Because he was in so many action movies, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, it's like they pushed him so hard. Like they pushed him harder than a bear's first shit of spring. And whatever, like, you know, the actual truth is, like, I will never not believe this rumour because it's, there's so much going for it. And most of it is just the fact that Steven Seagal is just not interesting and such a well-known piece of shit. And there are some amazing, like, stories, like, too many for us to, like, you know, um, uh, recount in this one video. One that sticks out in my head is a story told by Rob Schneider. You know, another well-known piece of shit. So, you know, um, birds of a feather flock together. And he talks about how, like, Steven Seagal came out of his, um, his trailer one day and went, I've just read the most genius script I've ever read. And Rob Schneider asked him who wrote it, and he goes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. That's, that's it. If anyone wants some catharsis now, and there's, like, as well, there's like a bunch of stories about how much awful he's like, um, like he's like a, I think an honorary police sergeant in one state in America where he shot a bunch of dogs and stuff like that. Fucking course. So if anyone wants some like catharsis, um, like, you know, just I reiterate that. There's a clip of him out there, and the context of the clip of him getting choked out and shitting himself is that he now believes his own hype, that he is this like mystical martial arts master. Did he tell master. an MMA fighter that he couldn't put him down? He told them that it's impossible to choke him out because he's in such control of his body and his breathing. <laughs> so the MMA fighter chokes him out and he shits himself. This is the actor that has to get written into movies that he can't lose a fight. Because he wouldn't win the fight. Yeah, that's another thing he does as well. Work, Every movie yeah. is in, he insists that he has to win the fights that he's in. He can never be shown to be weak, which makes all these fight scenes boring. And it's a similar thing with the Fast and Furious movies with Vin Diesel, another well-known piece of shit within Hollywood, where I think it's his sister or something like that, or someone very close to him is an executive producer on those movies. Right. And they sit there with like a literal like tally graph about how many punches his character throws and takes. Is this part of like why him and The Rock fell out? Yeah because he wasn't, The Rock was blocking his shine because The Rock's way more charismatic. And that's the joke I always make is, like, Vin Diesel is the fourth most popular bald character in a franchise he started. <laughs> and like, just reportedly behind the scenes, he's a nightmare to work with. Mm. Um, there's that amazing video, I think, he released, where it's Justin Lin, who recently left production of the latest movie. And you can just see him, like, Joe, like the Hide the Pain Harold. So that meme with like the guy who's smiling, it's like he's dead oh, inside. Yeah. You can just see Justin Lin like <laughs> it's just and Justin Lin's like, I can't work on these movies anymore. Vin Diesel's too much of a diva. Well it's so funny with him as well though, because he seemingly doesn't know that nobody likes him. That's what makes it so funny. Like he's clearly the least popular member of the like, nobody's favourite character in the Fast and Furious series is like Dominic Don, Toretto. Yeah. But he thinks that he is, and that makes it funny. He's like always part of the production, isn't he? Which is yeah. why he's always the star. And That's why he's like starting all the um, advertising material. And as I said, like he has people that he knows working on the movies who like whine in the ears of producers if they ever show anyone being stronger than he is. And that's why now he's basically a superhero in those movies. Yeah. Because they have to show him like any feat of physical strength, they have to show his character topping or matching. Which is how you end up with, like, you know, The Rock flexing out of a fucking cast. But then later in the movie, Vin Diesel destroys an entire parking structure because he's like, his ego is so fragile, he can't have a man 14 times his size. Because, as well, um, The Rock in real life is like six foot four. And Vin Diesel doesn't like that he's taller than him. So I've got a picture here, look. Now, this is from the thing. Like, he always has it in the editing, so it makes them the exact same height. Even though in real life, Dwayne Johnson is six foot four. Which culminated in, oh, where's that seat? So we have it here where to get them to look the same height, they have to do like camera trickery. It's a blurry ass shot for whatever. So. Is this behind the scenes? No, that's a, that's a oh, shot from wow. the movie. That's a shot in the movie. And I just love stuff like It's so funny to me. It's so amusing that these actors are just like so insecure about themselves. And if you um, are a secure person, you're confident, why don't you consider buying some fact fee merch? Okay. So I consider like, you know what? It's you who convinced me of this. I, Initially, was hesitant to wear my own merch. Mm -hmm. And so you said very sagely to me, was it you said, Lucas? Well, if you're not going to wear your own merch, then who the fuck is? Exactly. And I was like, that's a good point. Yeah. If I'm trying to sell this, 
Who's gonna wear it if I won't wear it? Uh, if you've got confidence to put like rock this look, it you know re requires re real confidence though. I think it's rocking this one, which apparently, according to the person running the store, is one of the more popular designs. <laughs> uh, we are currently in the process of uploading some more to that, so. Question is, did that just get like green screen? It out? probably did, it's an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, check it out at the links below.